let's bring in Katie Pavlich, townhall.com editor and Fox News contributor, and Hogan Gidley, former White House deputy press secretary. Good to see you both. So, Katie, at least until the springtime, both sides actually have some breathing room, both the, the White House, and they must have been a little nervous about what was going to happen. But even with Title 42, we've got a graph, by the way, of what's happened uh, in the past mm -hmm. couple of years with immigration, just just to, to be specific about it, that first big jump you see in 2019 was that year that that immigration really increased during the Trump administration. Then we had the remain in Mexico policy. You see that drop mm -hmm. down towards the right of yeah. your screen. And then, of course, it goes up with the Biden administration to new highs that we haven't seen. And that those new highs are with Title 42. So imagine what it would be like without Title 42. Well, the Supreme Court will now hear this case on the merits in March, and the case will center around whether the states have a right to intervene in immigration policy, essentially, that's handed down by the executive branch, particularly by a president. Now, let's not forget that the White House wanted Title 42 to be removed. They wanted mm. to see this, uh, you know, they're the ones who actually fought to get it lifted. Yeah. And yet now I predict that they will use this as an excuse and say, well, look, the Supreme court uh, upheld Title 42, and therefore we are doing a lot to prevent illegal immigration. As you said, you know, maybe there's breathing room. There's yeah. no breathing room for the country when it right. comes to the numbers of people who are coming in, record numbers of people, entire towns. Um, and it's interesting to see, you know, the media and the left uh, be very upset when illegal immigrants who come into the country in places like Texas, overwhelmed border towns, are taken to Washington, D.C. Yeah. in frigid temperatures, yeah. we'll but when they're on the that. streets in El Paso uh, freezing. They have Absolutely. nothing to say about it. Yeah, and, and, and Hogan, about the media and their role in playing along with the White House, ignoring the story, primarily ignoring the story, what the White House is getting away with and not addressing the story is amazing. Peter, Peter Ducey, our own Peter Ducey, challenged Jean-Pierre, the White House spokesperson, uh, the other day about immigration. Here was her response. I want to get your reaction to it. Roll tape. So look, I know there have been, uh, been a lot of rumors, a lot of speculations. Uh, I just, I'm not going to uh, go off of everything. I wouldn't go off of everything that you're hearing uh, quite yet, uh, but we will have sh some more to share tomorrow, and, and there will be a, a call, too, on this very, on these very varying, varying issues. Guess what, Hogan? There was no call, to. She didn't come back and address those concerns. They're just totally ignoring any critical questions <laughs> whatsoever, and they're getting away with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally shocked, David, that that's the, the status quo there in the White House. Look, this is either complete incompetence or this is by design. And I would argue it's the latter. The left is is so ravenous to get more political power, and they're doing so by trying to flood the country with millions of people that they think will end up voting for them. Forget the rest of us out here in America who have to suffer through spikes in crime, fentanyl crisis that are killing our, our, our uh, American citizens, the human trafficking, the child smuggling, the toll it takes in our communities on first responders, on schools, on yes. health care. These are all problems that the American people are now facing because we have illegal aliens in all 50 states. We have people from the terrorist watch list coming across into our borders. And the Democrats have done nothing to solve this. Forget Title 42 for a moment. They have no policies. In fact, it was Joe Biden who bragged that he was going to do everything different, the complete opposite of the previous administration, saying on the campaign trail, come on over. This is what America is all about. And now they throw their hands up as if this problem is just happening to them. Mm -hmm. It's happening because of them and their horrific policies. The American people know it and they want to change. And spare me the few Democrats who said, you know what, I think Joe Biden should come to our border and see what's going on. This is all their fault, too. And now we're facing a crisis of a humanitarian nature, of a terrorist nature, and they're doing nothing to fix it. Well, Katie, let me switch to the Omni bill, if I can, because that leads to questions about the Republicans crisis yeah. internally because they went along amongst the not only the huge amount of spending that I think it's going to end up be two trillion dollars not 1.7 uh, but this huge amount yeah. of spending it's inflationary that it, it takes away tax breaks for small business but it also doesn't add one penny uh, in terms of border security, not one penny. Border security, yeah. yes, in Arab countries and elsewhere in the world, mm -hmm. but not on our own border. And, and 
Mitch McConnell and other Republicans in the Senate went right along with it. How do Republicans address the concerns that they are not doing what they promised to do? Yeah, I mean, look, the, the truth is that Title 42 is a pandemic era policy. The pandemic is over. Congress and the White House should address right. this from a national security, a sovereignty point of view. And yet you have a number of Republicans helping Democrats when they could have prevented this, by the way. They could have waited until uh, January when the House could've. is in control of, of Republicans. Yeah. And yes, they, that yet they push forward with it anyway. And it, it brings into question, what do they stand for? I mean, Republicans yeah. have always said they're fiscally responsible. They've said that they believe in uh, strong borders and sovereignty and, you know, being against right. illegal immigration. And yet, Yet they voted for this bill, which is now passed, which causes all yeah. kinds of problems. It doesn't solve a single one of the major issues yeah. facing the I, country. I got to get Hogan in for a final Wait. word on this. We're running out of time, Hogan. But how can Republicans yeah. get their reputation back for conservative <laughs> principles? Well, well, with Republicans like these, who needs Democrats? Right. Look, I don't know about you guys, but I got to travel on, in a holiday, got to go see my mama, travel down the interstate. I was relieved that there were $3 million in that particular piece of legislation for bee-friendly highways. I was so excited because obviously we had a big problem with the uh, uh, bees falling off dead in this country. Now the federal government's involved, so I'm sure it'll all be okay. Republicans have a long way to go to repair their their uh, How do they do it? Here no, because they what's ran your, on, uh, what's your, well, your, your lesson to them? Well, their lesson is going to be in this new year, they're going to have to push for and actually pass policies that are fiscally sane, that protect American people from a growing debt and from spiking uh, yeah. inflation and interest rates going through the roof. They've shown no willingness and no backbone. We get rolled when we're in the minority and we get rolled when they're in the, in the majority too. It's a real problem and there's no wonder people are so furious at, at Washington DC yeah. elites who refuse to acknowledge the problems we face in, in real, uh, real America. I think it's time for another tea party. Time for another grassroots yeah. <laughs> tea party. I mean, it's simple. Do what you said you were going to do. Yeah. It's Implement not the rocket things science. you campaign on. And Kate, 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 Katie can lead it. <laughs> All right, Katie. <laughs> I, I Hogan, good Katie to see you. 